Good day, everybody. Welcome to FMA Discussion. This is episode 364 tonight. And today we have Guru Mark Hollick, and he's going to be telling us about his FMA journey. And towards the end, he's going to be doing a demo on his camera material. So I'm kind of excited about that. Um, I've seen a little of that stuff, and but not enough to formulate an opinion or anything. So I'm kind of curious to see what he's got to show. So without further ado, I'm going to be bringing him up. Also, if you're watching, tell us where you're watching from. Smash that like button, and we're just getting started. Hey, sir, how are you doing? Good, how are you? Good, I appreciate you coming on. You know, I know thanks you're busy with your schedule. <laughs> no, thanks for having me. Yeah, oh, my pleasure. So, uh, so I know we only have you for a set barred amount of time. So we're gonna, uh, we're not gonna waste any time here because I know sure. about 8.30 or so, you're gonna have to uh, jet out there or 7.30 your time. So, um, yeah, I got yeah. classed. That's okay, no, 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 we'll make it, we'll make it work. So we're, um, so just quick MMA martial arts background pre FMA. Before I studied uh, FMA, I did Taekwondo from 1982 to 1987, and that was my first start in martial arts. And I was 18 then, 19, and uh, so I did that. Got my black belt. And then I got married and we moved and the, where I moved to, there was no Taekwondo schools. And there happened to be this little Jeet Kune Do Kali school at the corner, which I never even heard of. Mm -hmm. And I went in there, the guy gave me a little demo and the rest is history. Yeah, I never I looked back. Sold. It was, I was sold. <laughs> yeah. And then what's funny is I went back to my old instructor in Taekwondo, his name was Master Shim. And I told him, you know, we were talking in his office and I'm like, oh, sir, you know, I started doing this, this Filipino art and I'm gonna add it to my Taekwondo, blah, blah. And he gets up out of the desk, walks around, lifts me up out of the chair, walks me to the door and says, see you later. And I was like his top student for, yeah. I was there every day, I did everything for him. And then he just booted me out. It didn't matter. The fact it that didn't you matter. were looking over there. It, didn't, <laughs> it was crazy. crazy. I know, but back then, that was like the, I mean, think about this. You're talking like, I mean, late 80s. Cross training back then from additional martial yeah. art. Yeah, it was taboo unless you went to Fred Deggerberg's because yeah. he was the only one like doing it. So we'd go, we'd go there. Because even when I was in Taekwondo, I would ask Master Shim, like I went to uh, uh, Stephen Hayes Ninja Seminar in 1984, and then I saw uh, Chai in like 1985. Just when I was in Taekwondo, I just went to these seminars, mm. and Master Shim was cool about it because he knew we weren't doing anything. We were just checking it out and mm. stuff. And then actually Stephen Hayes invited me to live on his ranch at the time in Dayton and study ninjutsu, but... Uh, I wasn't that big on it, so yeah, yeah. You know it was I mean? interesting, though. He took us night stalking and all wow. sorts of crazy stuff. Yeah, Climbing I don't walls. even know. They drove us out to the middle of nowhere, and ha they could have kidnapped us for all I know. We didn't know where we were. It was midnight. You know, it was crazy. But wow. the fun things we do in martial arts. Yeah, you know, especially when you're so curious and all that. So when you, know, when you did JKD school that you referenced in FMA, where was that? In Round Lake Beach, the guy's name was Glenn Doms, and uh, he he loved Paul Vunak. He loved Guru Dan. He said he taught Dose Paris, but everything he taught us was more Serata. And I didn't even know at the time. At the time, you know, yeah, you were now, you know. And I only lasted a year because he was kind of he was kind of crazy. Like every class, he had this altar room. And we'd have to go into this altar room and everyone had to light incense and we had to sit there and meditate. And he told us our job is to leave our body and to look down on ourselves. And I was like, what? So I would just sit there with my eyes closed thinking about anything, this, that. But it got to the point where he was really... I mean, he, he introduced me, so I'm not going to badmouth him. Sure. But... The, the things that he did, you know, he thought he was like the God. 
and even like our rank test, this is no lie. It was 10 hours. We had to stand in like this horse dance and he'd call us back one at a time and just say, show me what you know. That was it. Show me what you know. And you'd have to run through everything you could remember, this, that, and then he'd rank you accordingly while he's eating dinner and doing this and that. And I couldn't handle it after that. Yeah. I kind of left. And then I met, actually, I met Pete Hetrick there. He was one of the judges or, you know, the on the board or whatever. And he took me aside and said, hey, do you want to come train with me? And I was like, yes. So I would drive up to Beloit all the time. And so Pete really was my first Jeet Kune Do Kali instructor that I got certified by. And your savior. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We still laugh about it. And we got folks watching. We got Brett from Kentucky. All right. And we got James Irwin from Connecticut. And we got John from Connecticut. And we got Robert Rodriguez from Chicago. Hey, guys. All right. Um, so, okay, so you finally get to a place where you're not um, meditating and trying to look down at <laughs> your body. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, was, it was nuts. So what resonates, you know, so here you're coming from Taekwondo, because that's so funny. I came from Taekwondo initially and then went into, same with the Asano Blend, JKD slash the FMA. You know, when, um, and I remember my initial thoughts, you know, coming from this, uh, you know, kicking system with some punching, but predominantly this kicking system and then going into this four ranges and, and then this weapons. I mean, I, I just, I was like, you know, I, I just, you know, so like, what did you go through? You know, I, uh, well, I'll tell you this. I got slapped in the face a lot because I would still chamber my punches and, you know, he'd say, keep your hands up. And I'd go, <laughs> okay. And I'd put him down and then he'd slap me. Keep your hands up. I'm like, my hands are up. No, they're not. So that was like one of the hardest things to break was those middle punches that we did in Taekwondo. Mm. And, uh, and uh, that was one of my hardest things to break. Mm. And uh, I wasn't used to like, I never did weapons, you know, so that was all new to me. And, you know, but I, I as soon as I did it, I knew. This it's was so funny. Actually, same thing, man. I saw the knife and I'm like, that's it. Like, so actually, <laughs> actually, when I went in for info and he was showing me stuff, he was like, throw a punch. And he did a gun teen on me and my arm went numb. And I was like, sign me up. That's the coolest <laughs> thing ever. He came sign and me sign, up. He came inside yeah. the paper. <laughs> yeah. And that's. It's true. That's how I did. I was like, oh, my God, I never saw anything like that. The same thing. And then, like, my first teacher was Ron Kozakowski. He's still in Connecticut. And then there was a trapping. But then there was trapping range. And then there was tra I mean, I was just like, what, what the hell? Yeah. <laughs> he would, he just... would divide the class like an hour and a half Kali and then an hour and a half of, like, Wing Chun. Yeah. So I don't know. And we'd be there till 10, 1030 at night. And I was just married. My wife would get mad <laughs> you know, because I'm gone all night and stuff. And oh, uh, so it was a, a blessing when I met Pete. Yeah. And uh, then I started, you know, my wife was pregnant. So she stayed home and I started I was a printer by trade. That's what I did my okay. whole life. And uh, so I would work at the printing place and then I would go teach at this other martial arts school at night to make extra money. And I was making this, I built this school up and he was only giving me like a hundred dollars a week. And my father-in-law happened to come by and saw what was going on. And he said, could you do this on your own? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, what do you think it would cost? And this is like 1996. And I'm like 25, 30 grand maybe to open and stuff. So he lent me the money and the rest is history. So was this still, but now, because you're talking about, so where'd you move? Where, where'd you relocate? I guess when did this all take place? In what, do you mean? what do you mean? No, was you were in Cal, were you, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. Were you were in California initially? No, no, no. I've always been in Illinois. You always been in Illinois. Okay, so yes. he's not shit. My mistake. Yes. Okay, so, so he was, funded you the money. Okay. Yes. And, and then uh, okay. I went to, uh, I found a town that's kind of upscale and yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> opened. Yep, I, I knew it from the beginning. They were just yeah. building this mall. So I got a 1,500 square foot little place 
I outgrew that within a year and a half. I went to the, in the same mall to a 4,000 square foot place. And I stayed there for probably three or four years. And then the place I'm in now came up for sale and I bought it. And uh, it's a 6,000 foot. It used to be a carpet warehouse. And uh, now it's, an excellent gym i can even pan out and show people but uh but yeah here i am and this is the last this is the last move <laughs> yeah yeah exactly. so so when you first opened up your school i mean up to that point you're pretty much jkd and asano blend yep I mean, not, I was, not enough i mean but okay. yep i did actually i did jkd and kali but at the beginning i still at i still kept a little of my taekwondo like I, I still taught forms at the beginning to the kids and the adults. You know, I taught more kicking back then. And as I met up with Ron Balicki and uh, Guru Dan and stuff, I started evolving and getting rid of stuff and changing stuff. And, uh, you know, I really owe Ron Balicki the most credit because he took me from here to here. And, yeah. you know, without his toolage, I wouldn't be... The martial artist I am today, so I really give Ron Balicki a lot of credit. He's my that, good friend, and that is so interesting that you kept because when I when I came from my Taekwondo, I I was sick of my job, so I was going to open a school, and so I did MMA and FMA for kids. And everybody's telling me your community is financial suicide, and I'm like, I guess I am, um, but. I couldn't completely let go. So much like you, I kept the forms, but just for the kid. <laughs> and then finally, when you start picking up, I'm like, you know what? I don't think I need these anymore. <laughs> I even I even had geese still for the adults and belts. You I know? had geese and belts for the kids. Not the, yeah, yeah, yeah. I did it you for know? adults too. I was like, you know, and uh, you know. yeah. And then, uh, I can't tell you how many times my curriculum has evolved and changed. Oh, pain. I went the same thing. With, you know, it's a, and actually, it's a pain in the ass to redo the whole curriculum. Oh, it is. No, no. But, and then you got uh, my kids, Yeah, then... my kids' curriculum is a rotating, and my kids learn JKD, but kind of watered down. Like, they yeah. don't get any knife. You know, they don't even touch sticks till they're intermediates. Yeah. But they learn all the boxing, tie boxing, trapping. You know, mm. I don't do any katas with them. You know, no horse, none of that stuff. So we're kind of more a progressive. And I'm the only one around this this whole county, basically, that does non-traditional martial arts yeah. for the kids. I still have them wear these and belts, but we don't do any traditional stuff. And then my adults just wear a school shirt, pants, you yeah. know, and yeah. uh, and I like it. Sometimes it's a little casual, you know, we play music and stuff. And, mm -hmm. you know, because my whole thing on, especially adults, you don't need to come in here and be bowing to me every five seconds. You turn around here because the black belt. And yeah, afraid to do anything. No, <laughs> we bow in and then we yeah. go. And that's that's it. You know, all I ask is you give me respect. You know, guru, sifu in class. When we're out of the school, you can call me Mark. I don't care. You know, I'm not like that. I'm really yeah. humble. And uh, I just want my people to have fun. And learn stuff because if they're not having fun, they're not going to come. No, they're not going to come back. Going to put yeah. you out of business. Even the kids, we make sure it's fun. Yeah, yeah. If you want to keep the doors open, I mean, right? Yeah. You know? I mean, that's... and I didn't even know how it would work with a JKD school. I had no clue, and mm. luckily it worked out for me. And yeah. uh, because no one around here, there's no JKD schools. There's no Kali schools. I'm really oh, the only you. one, unless you go to Chicago. Yeah, of so uh, I kind of have a niche, and because now I've been here 25 years, everyone knows my school. Yeah, you know I've got the greatest reputation in my my community, and everyone recommends people. I don't even really advertise, and uh, it's really nice. You yeah, know, I'm really blessed. Yeah. I'm really yeah. blessed. Yeah, I mean that's eventually we want to get to. You know, is word of mouth. In the beginning, you have to do all the all that stuff to get you know get the word out there and get some traffic in and momentum but after that it really is word right out. Um, right and then you know. i just turned 60 so now i'm like how long do i keep doing this yeah <laughs> i know like rolling around well you're not rolling around for the kids anymore so that's you know <laughs> yeah i don't teach the kids anymore so it saves me a lot of stress and heartache 
Yeah, and yeah. Uh, the adults are fun. You know, I don't have the same problems. No, but being the owner, you know, I deal with all the parents and all the billing and all. The, you know, people think you open a martial arts school and you're just teaching martial arts. No way. No. You're a doctor. No. You're a therapist. You're a teacher. You know, yeah. you wear many hats that I have no qualification to wear, but I do good. You know, the parents come to me. The parents come to me. Oh, Joey's acting up, and I'm like, well, I only see him twice a week. He's with you all the time. What's going on here? You yeah. want me to discipline him? You know, yeah. so yeah. Uh, it's it's different. You know, bills and worrying about the building and this and that. So. Honestly, so I'll tell you this. Yeah. sometimes turning your hobby into your business ruins your hobby because yeah. it's not stress relief anymore. I used to have fun and just go. So now it's not stress relief anymore. It's actually stress. Yeah, I know. <laughs> so, you know, I had to find something else to do. So I picked up guitar and that's my stress relief. Yeah, there's your, there's your stress. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. awesome. But uh, so. At what point, so you open up your school, at what point did you meet Ron and Rye? I mean, like, so in other words, you had your school, but it sounds like you wanted to still become a, become a student. So how did you, uh, how did that come about? So I opened the school in 1997. I got a flyer from Degerberg that month, that month that I opened, saying that he had Diana Inasano coming and Ron mm. Balicki. Well, I had no clue who Ron Balicki was. I wanted to see Diana in Asano. She's in, you know, in Asano. So I went to the seminar, and it was actually Ron taught most of it, and he just blew me away. And I was like, after the seminar, I said, hey, would you be willing to come to my school? And uh, so he was the first seminar I ever hosted in 1998. And I would bring him in two times a year religiously and uh, ever up until COVID. He was at my school at least twice a year, every every year. And uh, and that's how I met him. And then he sponsored me for Guru Dan. So I've been mm. with Guru Dan for a really long time. I saw Guru Dan in the early 90s when I taught at the other school because Pete Hetrick would host these camps in Beloit. So I went to like a 24 hour camp. It was so cool, but it was my first time seeing him and I was so lost. Yeah. I had no idea what was going on. And luckily some people took me under their wing and helped me, Rick Fay, uh, this guy, Rick Salo, Pete, they all kind of felt sorry for me, I guess, and helped me. And that's <laughs> how I met all of them. So now, you know, I bring Rick Fay in for seminars, okay. you know, Ron, I would love to bring Guru Dan to Chicago, but he will not come. Mm. And because uh, there's bad animosity in Chicago with some people. So Paula will not let him come. Oh, and, that's too uh, bad. Oh, okay. Yeah, it is too bad because I would kill to have Guru Dan here. Mm. And, uh, but it is what it is. So I just go travel, see him when we can. And, uh, yeah. you know, it's it's good. I, I'm lucky, I uh, Guru Dan introduced me to Grandmaster Attilo of Balintawak. And that's another funny story because I was at a seminar and Guru Dan comes up to me and he says, Mark, you know, I'm training with this, this uh, Filipino master in Balintawak and he has family in Chicago. So you should bring him in. And I'm just like, okay, Guru, you know, thanks. I'll think about it. Not having any desire to do it. Yeah. So Sunday I go back to the seminar and he comes up to me and he says, Mark, I called the grandmaster and he's waiting for your call. And I'm like, oh, no. oh my God. So I called him, set it up. And again, turned out to be a godsend. Grandmaster Attila's so awesome. He really? blew us away. You know, we trained with him for a long time. And so I added Belin to walk to my repertoire. And uh, it's just funny how things work out. Yeah. It's just bizarre, you know? Jeez. So just, I want to just, go back a bit uh, when you were with Ron, I mean so obviously you had you know through the JKD training you know you had the pieces there you know some of the tie boxing your western boxing and all that but Ron must have really gave you some I mean more of the sea lot lens right I'm guessing or? he did everything not to mention beat the living crap out of me 
uh, he was not a nice guy at the beginning. You know, he was a fighter mentality and I didn't have that mentality. So he gave it to me, which I really appreciate. Cause if you can handle Ron, you can hang with anyone, but he would come in and he would basically, cause Ron taught at the Academy for a long time. Mm. So he taught us Academy curriculum. Okay. So I don't have seminar, like I'm way past, like if you go see Guru Dan and you compare a seminar. a seminar student to a, a curriculum, you know, a student at a school, it's okay. night and day. And that was cool with Ron. He took us through all the, mm. all the series, lead hand series, one to 36, you know, we did, and we did a lot of Lameco. Ron was really big in Lameco. Oh, yeah. So I have a big background in Lameco. So, uh, but Ron was just phenomenal in everything. His shoot wrestling, his yeah. his tie, his uh, his JKD, Kali, Sealot. I, I I would just be a sponge and eat it up. I'd do privates, bring him in an extra day or two. Mm. And uh, yeah, it was great. Kind of the good old days. The good old day, yeah. So <laughs> uh, so Ab, no, okay, so Ab, as far as the Belinda walk goes, um, you know, I know you were hesitant at the beginning, but now you're doing it. So you look at the stuff you've been doing, you know, the, you know, the, you look at the ensemble blend, Lameco, PTK in there, Kabbalists and all this. And now stick wing chung, Blintelock. That's exactly what it is. Stick yeah. wing chung. You so, know, it's just very close quarter. Yeah. I could feel I could spar with it pretty good. You know, because Grandmaster taught us how to control the stick and, mm. you know, and up until him, you know, with Guru Dan and Ron, we kind of teach, treat the stick more like a sword. So Ooh. it kind of was taboo to just grab the grab stick. Yeah. Well, now with Balintawak, it's a stick. So you could grab the stick and hit the person and then hit them. And I was like, oh, my God, this is ingenious, you know. Yeah. And Grandmaster was so fast. You couldn't touch him. Every time you tried to touch him, he'd be trapping you and doing this and that. And for 84, 85, he was unbelievable. And I'll just fill in one funny story with him. The very first time I brought him in, I was trying to figure out where to take him to eat for dinner, you know, because there's really no Filipino places around. So I'm thinking, okay, vegetables, rice, stuff like that. Yeah. So I took him to a Japanese steakhouse. Well, we sit down and I could see this look on his face and I'm like, what's wrong? And he starts telling me how his family was taken by the Japanese. Oh. Him and his dad had to run into the hills and hide in caves while they were being bombed. And here I am sinking in the booth, lower, lower. And I'm like, oh, my God, what did I do? He wouldn't eat. He wouldn't. Not, so we left. It was insane. I'm like me and my wife were like, "What the heck did we just do?" You, you know, because I just, no you just lost a teacher. <laughs> oh my god, it was so embarrassing. Because, but I had no idea. So uh, that's kind of my funny story with him. That's, yeah, sure. luckily he. Wow. So yeah, I had like, no clue. No. Yeah. Right. How would you? Yeah. I mean, you wouldn't know. I mean, right. I mean, um, so what do you? Okay. So when you're teaching, because I know we got. We got time limited in plus your demo. Okay. So I know you teach kids up to adults. Mm -hmm. As far as the kids go, what do you give them specifically as far as FMA at what age? Uh, I don't really age it. It's more like, so my belts, like my beginners are white, yellow, orange. And then my intermediates are green, purple, blue. So once they get to green belt, they get sticks. And then we start teaching them just basics right now. Ecus, high, low, low, high, high, low, high, you know, and then as they progress a little, they'll start with like inside sweep. I'll teach them like a snake disarm. Just, you know, we gradually bring them up. Once they get to advance, I start adding some C lot and stuff. And then once they get black belt, I'll start introducing the knife to them, but I won't do it until they're black belts. No, yeah, I think that's a good, yeah, kids and I, yeah. We're yeah. I, kids weapons in our kids. Yeah, weapons. yeah, no, I can't, you know, <laughs> I'd, I'd have the parents ripping on me. And, yeah, for good um, reason. I mean, you, yeah. got, you know, Johnny goes to school with a buck knife and oh my gosh, I shouldn't no, even be joking about that. I um, know, 
I know. You but know. Uh, so that's how I kind of treat the kids, you know. And at the beginning, they they start with their basic boxing, jab, cross, hook, mm -hmm. uppercut, their mm -hmm. footwork. You know, I still teach basic front kick, round kick, side kick, because mm -hmm. of the three kicks. Even though they're taekwondo, they're still totally. That's, so funny. that's the kicks I kept. Just the yep, three kicks. That's it. I don't I don't do any spins. I don't do axe kicks anymore. I didn't either. That was yeah. Just... <laughs> the only thing I'm sad about is I lost all my flexibility. You know, back in the day, I could kick in the head before you can move your hand. Now I'm lucky to get it up to your waist or, you know, yeah. really with tie and everything, it's all low kicks anyway. Right. So as I got older, it suited me better. Yeah. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I mean, so, um, okay. As far as your adults, because you got now, you got the Anasano blend. I mean, you got stuff from Ron Blakey. You got Balintawak. I got Rick keep, Fay. Yeah, do you keep the FMA? Do you keep those systems separate when you're teaching, or do you kind of a melting pot? I melt them together. Okay. So I'll go through Ron. I take Ron's curriculum and Rick Fay's curriculum, and I kind of take the things that I like and think my students should learn as they go. Because hmm. to me, Ron Balicki is more the fighter mentality. Guru Rick Fay is more the artist, and I really like that. He's, you know, he's really into all, you know, the technical stuff and mm. just his Panatukan is second to none. Rick Fay is just awesome in that. So a lot of my Panatukan, I learned from him and Ron. But Rick, like I said, is more into the, you know, the artsy stuff. Guntin, come over, eyes, mm. this, that, where Ron is just, Guntin, punch the bicep, punch the bicep, blah, blah, you know. So, uh, so yeah. Awesome. So as far as your adult students, ones who are like, you know, not, I guess, the ones who I guess are more in the serious, uh, you know, they have a serious desire to really get this material, maybe get it ranked and, you know, mm -hmm. like, what do you try and instill in them as far as their journey, their FMA journey go? Uh, I start with the basics and instill that with them. Each one of my levels, I kind of call it like phase, phase one, phase 1.1, phase 1.2, then it goes to phase two, then three. So that's how they climb. So each phase has certain amount of hours they have to put in before they're eligible to test. And I keep track of every time they're in class, they get a check so that goes towards their, their training manual. And then once they hit a specific amount of hours, they can go longer if they want, or they can try to, you know, test and uh, move up. And uh, that's kind of how I do it. You know, okay. I, don't, I don't really have like one Saturday where everyone comes together and test. Right. I'm more test individuals. Like, you know, I have a couple yellow belts. They're ready to go. So I'll just do them. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? And then yeah. I'll move on to, you know, someone else the next day or whatever. But mm -hmm. uh, so far, I mean, all my students are happy. They like what they're learning. Oh, uh, good. Yeah. yeah, I mean... Awesome. I've got a really good group of guys and I have a great group of instructors because without great instructors, your school mm. will not be great. You know, there's not yeah. one person here who is not top and I love That's it. Awesome. You know, yeah. I can take a day off and not worry that the school is going to fall apart, you know? Yeah. Jeez. So what's your ranking structure for the uh, adults then? Uh, they don't go by, well, like I said, they go by phases. So, so phases, what, like phase assistant one, instructor or? Yep. Then, yeah, I don't really give them instructors until they're like phase <laughs> three. But, uh, but yeah, but they're, in, you know, beginners, intermediates, advanced, okay. and they keep, and everything progresses. So level one, it starts here. Level two gets harder, harder, okay. harder, harder. And it gets really hard towards okay. the, you know, your level threes because I want them, A, to be good. B, if they go to another school and say they trained in this art, I yeah. want them to know what they're talking about and have that other person go, wow, you're pretty good. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So I pride myself on trying to make my students great. Yeah. So, you know, and even like I have this online Pentateuchan course I do, it's 10 levels and, you know, I'm kind of weird with Zoom. I don't, I'd rather see people. 
but I tell the people who I can't see because I got guys like in Switzerland and here and there who test on Zoom, but I'm like doubly hard on them. Yeah. I nitpick everything and make them fix it because they're not seeing me and I don't want someone to accuse them of just buying it or me selling no, it. No, I got you. What I'm saying? So if you ever do Zoom with me, I'm a, I'm a nitpicker, even the littlest thing, you know, because again, you know, I ask to try to see them once a year, but obviously Switzerland, you know, they can't come here, yeah. but, uh, but that's how I kind of do that. And then, uh, I designed a hammer defense program one day and, uh, that really kind of took off and it's just an eccentric type art. You know, I look at it as, you know, not every household has martial art weapons or guns, but every house has a hammer. That's and a, if you a comedy that, hammer. Yeah. You know, I even keep a hammer in my car. I'm the, you know, I mean, it's a great, it's a great tool that no yeah. one ever thinks about. Yeah. And, uh, you know, right. it, 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 it is, it's like, people think you got a hammer in your car. They're not, you know, they're not thinking. I think a question. Yeah, is, what's a cop gonna say? I was just yeah, looking at my. You got a hammer, right? Yeah. You know. Okay, here's a question: Have you had the privilege of meeting and hanging out with Mike Pearson? No. Okay. Who's he? Or he has you? Huh. This is Brett is asking this. I think he's just wondering. Huh. Okay. Um, so, okay. Um, I mean, maybe I met him and I don't know. <laughs> it's, it's Eric O'Brien. It's hammer. Actually, Eric, it is hammer time. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so you know how many times I get that joke? I know. I, yeah, I'm sure. So, uh, well, okay. So then what, the, uh, so far in the demo, because I, I know you got jet at, uh, uh, 730. 730. Um, we, so we got uh, 12 minutes. So whatever you want to show for his demos. I'm going to try to set this up so sure. you can see uh, Jeff come over. Actually, that's pretty good. Actually, you know what I can do here? I can even make it bigger. I'm going to just, I'm going to um, minimize myself. Yeah. There cool. we go. So again, not every household has weapons, guns, but everyone has a hammer. Now, when I designed this course, obviously you just can't go around hitting people with a hammer because I'd be in jail for assault or murder or whatever. So my whole course is designed off the knife. I'm being attacked with a weapon and this is my, my defense. So how we start, so like the very first one, if he would just thrust low, the first thing I do is hit his arm. I trap it, and then the first thing I do is just smack him in the head. That's like just basic 101. So I would just stab, hit, hit like that. And this is, it looks like a real hammer, but it's foam. So it's pretty cool. So I can oh, hit him. Okay. So that's one of the first things. So I'll, again, I'll just hit, 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 take it. Another one I'll do. Like if he comes in and I go hit him and I go to strike him in the head and he raises that arm up to block, I'll pull it down and hit straight up with the head of the hammer and then come back across like that. Because hitting up with this is so nasty. You don't think about it, but it's it's bad news and it, it'll break jaws and stuff like that. So again, that one goes here as he blocks, I pull, hit and then finish off like that. Mm. We have ones where he'll come in and I'll backhand and then he'll punch. So I'll go in with the gun team like that. I'll come over, hit again up with the, the head of the hammer, throw it away and finish mm. like that. So I kind of make it kind of a Panatukan type with the hammer. You know, I like using the claw. So if he, I don't know if you can see, come back this way a little. But as I, I, hit, yeah. like I hit like this, and then I'll just take the claw right to the groin and just hit oh. like that. Boom, and then rip it out, hit. So there's a lot of fun things. Uh, sparring with the hammer. We've, we've done tests with it with a real hammer. And the problem with sparring is the hammer's heavy. So yeah. it's hard to pull back. because the you control, got all the yeah. Right. So what we've come up with is when you spar, you hold it like this. 
and I <laughs> hammer down. So now when he's coming at me with the knife, whatever he's doing, just throw some things. I can hit it. I can hit it. Thrust. Even if he fakes me, I can recover and come right back in. So mm. this, when it comes to sparring, is what I recommend. I've done some things with reverse grip of the hammer. I don't like it that much. But if I happen to pick it up, I could still use it and hit, 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 hit up, down. So uh, I've just tried to come up with a whole bunch of different scenarios. And again, everything's based off the knife. And in one of my DVDs, it's off gun as well. Because those are the only things I could really think of that justify you bashing someone with a hammer. Yeah. So, you know, I, I'll kind of do that. He'll come in, you know, even like how it maybe I miss and I come around and as I strip it, I hit him right in the head at the same time. So, yeah. and then maybe, you know, if he survives that and punches again, I can come back around, hit here, hit, hit, hit and finish him off and kind of be on my way. Mm. So, uh, so yeah. So it's just, you know, we'll even hit focus mitts. So I get beaten you know, on my students used to hitting with a hammer and we'll just do X's on the focus mitts. We can go high and low on the focus mitts, high and low this way, low and high. So I'll kind of add some collie drills, high, low, high, mm. you know, just to move the hammer around a little bit and get used to it. Obviously I don't twirl or nothing like that, mm. but uh, you know, I just want people to get good at hitting, hitting, yeah. hitting and practicing we'll do those we'll put those lameco arm guards on lameco guards yeah yeah and he'll just stab randomly and i'll just pop it pop 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 so you start learning your awareness because the target isn't that big so you want to be practicing to make mm. sure you know that you can hit the arm and the wrist and not miss because if you miss you might get the knife and you know what i'm saying so I kind of put a lot of emphasis on practicing, hitting things, and then a lot of partner drills. Mm. So, like I said, I have a four DVD series, and uh, it's you know it's fun. It's something different. Uh, I like to try to find niches that other people don't have. You know, yeah. everyone has this, everyone has that, but I've not seen really a hammer program. Actually, the first person I saw use a hammer was uh, was Guru Mall from uh, a Mall Morning, the Sea Lock guy. Mall Morning. I saw him demo. Yeah. One. Yeah, and I saw him once do something with it, and I wrote him and I said, "Hey, do you mind if I play around with it and do something?" Because I didn't want to like steal from him. And he's like, right. "Absolutely, go ahead." So I designed oh, okay. the program, and I, like I said, I made it real in depth. My Panatukan program is really in depth, everything from, and it's Panatukan and Sealot because I feel Panatukan and Sealot marry so nice together that yeah. they, you know, they're like brother, sister. So I will teach because traditional Sealot, I'm not the biggest fan of, of stepping with the right, punching with the right, and then doing all this. You don't get that on the street. You're going to get more of the jab and crosses. So I want to be able, it's almost like what, uh, what Guru Burton Richardson did with his like C lot for the street. Oh, I love it. I'm wondering yeah, that. Like the same way. So yeah. I'll do Panatukan entries and then I'll finish with sweeps, yeah. Kenjits, pooters, you know, yeah. neck pull downs. You know, uh, yeah. we do things out of who, bud. Uh, I go through all the different series Ron taught, you know, the series Rick Fay taught, because actually they both sat down with me when I was doing this and kind of helped me do the, the, the design for the curriculum and stuff like okay. that. So uh, it came out really good. I give credit where credit's due. And, yeah. uh, you know, it, it's it's awesome. That, and honestly, they've sold around the world it kind of freaks me out sometimes when i see people malaysia bought one or singapore or oh, like awesome. I said, new zealand it is it's i'm like holy cow people right. are watching me you know <laughs> it's like wow wow i think there's a guy who copied your hammer though um guy in new york um it was a couple years ago i think um because i remember seeing it first with you um you know like how long yeah i think this guy i, I don't think he did no words as well as, 
you have though like uh, mm -hmm. yeah um but you know i think that's awesome that you know you obviously you know you asked google mall you know what i mean hey you know do you, it's okay if i you know play around with this and all that most people unfortunately they're not gonna you know what i mean <laughs> yeah. right i'm trying to yeah. just look at some of the comments oh yeah we got uh, i used to teach yeah renee i used to teach but yeah truth but i thought run wait because i think the old ancestors turn a home yeah the tomahawk and uh yeah very yep. similar that's true yep. Brett. but yeah. i don't carry a tomahawk ever yeah so I that's know. why you know i try to think of practicality yeah. you know what what could i have on me you know mm. like my big thing too is cane i love cane and cane. i've got the whole cane program how to present the cane how to you know carry it if you're doing something and engage with it how to do the strikes to the hands bayonet type and then how to go in with the hook and elbow oh, and nice. do this and that so to me i love the cane i carry a cane in my car you could carry a cane anywhere on an airplane right, you go through with anywhere. stores cane and yeah, anyway, you know, yeah. And I don't really like, I don't treat it like the cane masters guys. I kind of treat it as it's Kali with a hook. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, okay. So all my, you know, I do all my swinging. You can do all your redondos and all that. Mm. Then you have this hook to use at the end and you can uh, hook the neck, hook the groin. One of my favorite things to do is do like a camiata push on their shoulders. So they go down uh, and the hook is right by their groin. So you just walk. And you hook their groin, oh, that's and neat. Then, you know. So I love the cane. I like practical stuff that yeah. I could have yeah. handy. You know. Do you yes, have a program for that now? Hmm? You got a program for that now? Uh, I do in my school. I don't. I don't video it. Oh, you, have, you haven't put it out there for public yet. Okay. All right. No, I haven't. Okay. I haven't. Okay. But, Sounds uh, like you should. I mean, you're not I probably gonna... should. Maybe that'll be my next endeavor. I was gonna say, which at least my next question is: I know you have to jet in a few minutes. What are your future goals? Like, like, what do you? I mean, school yourself, you know. My future goal is to finish and get my full instructor under Gurudan. I'm one oh, level okay. away, so I'm hoping. Oh, nice. And I've been, you know, doing it for so long, trying to get there, and uh, so I'm almost there. Uh, my one big goal last year was to get, or a couple of years ago, is get my full instructor in Iran, which I did. Uh, I'm an instructor with Rick Fay, and I'm not really a paper chaser, but it's, you know, the instructors I do, I like to represent them. Like, sure. if you come in here, I'm actually teaching Ron stuff. I'm actually yeah. teaching Rick Fay's stuff. Yeah. So, again, if you go see these people, we're like, hey, we do this in class. Yes, you do it in class. So it's not like I teach all different stuff and then you go mm. see the people and you're totally lost. You know what yeah. I'm saying? So I try to do that. I try to pay homage to my instructors and give credit. And uh, then I'll add in my own stuff. And uh, yeah, so my goal for the school, I'd love 300 students. Right now I'm at like, cause of COVID killed me. So I'm kind of at like maybe 150 175 but i'd love to hit 300 and 300 you know, sit on a beach and drink out of a coconut you know <laughs> so at your peak what was what was the most in chat at your peak uh how many students at my peak yeah i, I had 200. that's still 200 that's still that's a lot it was crazy man. it was going so good and yeah. then COVID just Put me right yeah, down i know but you, right i know but it's not like you're building back up like i remember back in the heyday like the most i had i think was 120 but 200 that's awesome that's, that's it is awesome yeah. you know and i have the space for it so that's cool oh, 6, 000, yeah. you know i host seminars we're doing a big filipino seminar coming up in uh april with tuhan jesse uh, I got Billy Brown coming in, Guru Billy, and then I got these two other guys. Their names kind of. I think I saw that. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, and then we're gonna try to do that a couple times a year and like round out instructors. So I want to try to grab other people yeah. and come in and you know kind of make a community out of it and you know showcase other people who my guys or anyone around here wouldn't necessarily yeah. get to see. But uh, yeah, matter of fact, we're Jesse, doing. Um... 
cool. kind of what I'm doing with FMA discussion, taking on the road. I'm going to certain states and just whoever's in that state, bring them to get like that. And, yeah. Um, you know, and that's, uh, hey, when you, when they, I know you got to go, when April comes around, if you want, I, um, when is it on April? What date? 2021, 20, 22. Okay. If you want, uh, like a couple of weeks beforehand, if you want to bring attention to it, I could bring you and Jesse on or whatever. And you That'd be great. Talk. You yeah. guys should talk it up. Yeah, and if you're ever in Chicago, I'd love for you to come over here and you know, oh, that would be, yeah. or something. You know, and I get hammer. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'll give you a hammer. <laughs> I'm gonna wear my uh, Sex Pistols shirt with a hammer. <laughs> Heck yeah, I'm an old school punker. I, I know. I, I from like '78, '79 in high school. I was a punk rocker, and no one was. Yeah. You know, yeah. I love punk still. On my guitar, I play a lot of Sex Pistols and oh, Dead Cat awesome. and Social Distortion. So, uh, I love that stuff. So we have that in common. Oh, yeah. 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 Play some Misfits for me. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I got the sticker on my computer, <laughs> the Misfits. Yeah. Oh, awesome. So, uh, so but, yeah. So, but yeah, so touch, don't hesitate to touch space with me, like in March, whatever, to bring you guys on to promote your, your um, seminar. Okay. Yeah. Sounds Seriously. great. Don't 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 hesitate. I'll be more okay. than happy to get you guys on. Yeah. Okay. I appreciate that. Oh yeah, yeah. And no uh, I really appreciate you having me on. I'm sorry yeah. if it's a little loud. The kids are leaving now. Oh, no worries. No the worries. Good atmosphere. Yeah. No. But, uh, but I know you got, you got to run. So, but hey, I appreciate you and uh, stay in touch. All right. Thank you so much, sir. Okay. We'll be in touch. <laughs> Thank you. Can. Bye. Take care. That was a short but sweet one, but a uh, good guy seems like, uh, yeah, 6,000 square feet. He's got quite the place there. So hopefully he'll come back on when he gets closer to his uh, seminar and we'll get him back on. And miss, uh, oh yeah, Renee, yeah, he could do it, beat the crap out of you. Yeah, like, talk about that, man. Look at the size of this place. Wow, yeah. So who is next? Sunday night covering uh, Chad Bailey's camp in my, uh, not Miami, that's where he lives. Um, Oh boy, where is it? It's towards the Gulf side. Um, I forget the name of the area, but at any rate, in Florida. So uh, I'm bringing him on from Frank, and um, yeah, we're gonna just give some exposure to his camp coming in, which is the first weekend in February. Arcadia, that's it, Arcadia, Florida. Yeah, and 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 hold on, hold on. If you are in or by Connecticut, Mass. Massachusetts, Rhode Island, and you want to come play with these guys, I urge you to check this out. We're hosting Connecticut's first time hosting Beat the Crap Out of Cancer. And big thanks to uh, Renee, who was watching. I still think he's well. Um, yeah, allowing this to happen. So, um, yeah, it's all right there. February 11th, second weekend, second Saturday in... Um, February and basically um, big thanks to Chris Smith we're gonna use this place and basically all the money is gonna go to um, this this uh, gentleman who Micah McQueen unfortunately yeah cancer so we're gonna give all we can to him and hopefully it helps but yeah it's good it's a great time I went to one in New York uh, it was my first one I just was hooked I just wanted to get one going connecticut and um it was tons of fun you know good guys there were no egos just wonderful atmosphere yeah so if you're in the tri-state area and you want to check that out uh let me know all right folks thank you those who tuned in and watch and we'll see you hopefully see some of you sunday night all right